The Lexus reveal is here. You RX lovers, NX lovers, we've got something hot for you today. My name is Paul Barron. This is Tech Path. Today, we're getting a chance to really break down some of the hottest EVs that are revealing themselves. And finally, we see a lot of the original you know, ICE manufacturers that are moving at a fast pace to really kind of get going. Now, granted, Lexus has been in the hybrid game for a very long time. They, in fact, probably are one of the best hybrid manufacturers out there. I have many friends who own the RX Hybrid, love that vehicle. They absolutely love it. Here's my question, and this is one I think everyone has to ask, and this is just here with the central, or the, the simple name of electrified concept from Lexus. Now. They're stating that could be a hybrid, it could be fully electric, it could be a combination thereof. My question is if this car, the LFZ, does not go fully electric, this is a fail out of the block for Lexus. Granted, the styling cues are there, but in if you're dealing with a hybrid vehicle, why would you have not just maybe taking, uh, taken a, one of the SUVs that you currently have, whether it's NX or the RX, or creating a crossover version of that and just staying in that model with, uh, rather than right, trying to reproduce a, an entirely new vehicle. I believe that Lexus might be actually moving in this direction of a fully electric vehicle. It has claimed a WLTP range of 600 kilo, kilo, kilometers, which is 373 miles, using a 90 kilowatt lithium ion battery pack. That is bigger than the Model Y at 70 kilowatts. So, um, Interesting, 373 miles. This is a powerful statement if this is all electric because that would definitely start to bump the upper level of where the you know the current king of the hill is in terms of range, and that would be Tesla. And you're getting into kind of the Model S, uh, which is a 412-mile range on the all-wheel drive, or uh, excuse me, all long-range model, model S. But to compare this with the Mercedes EQS, which has a 108-kilowatt battery pack, uh, basically, it's the same range. This will be interesting to see if this going head-to-head -head with more of the luxury uh, vehicles versus the crossovers. The design and styling cues of this vehicle are absolutely stunning. I love the look of it. This is definitely a very advanced vehicle. I think Lexus, if they can pull this one off and get this vehicle to market, this could be a huge winner for Lexus. They've kind of dominated the uh, you know the mid-range uh, SUV and crossover space with the RX and the NX series for quite some time. And when you look at the ES and even their upper range uh, luxury vehicles and sedans, uh, Lexus has been a big, big performer in terms of a customer our customer satisfaction, uh, the ability to go a long distance without ever having to change out your vehicle. So there's some great opportunities there. But I do think that Lexus is going to have to jump into the EV space in a big way. This one, though, says zero to 62 in three seconds. This is what tells me this is a fully EV car. There is no way a gas car is going to do this kind of number at zero to 62. You'd have to have an engine the size of, uh, I don't know, maybe a, uh, gosh, I don't know what you'd have to have in there to get to a three second 60 uh, mile per hour. So this is going to be interesting, 124 mile uh, top speed. Also, this has Direct 4, which is an all-wheel drive control system, aka torque vectoring. Uh, this is going to get some yoke steering wheels, so all the Tesla boys out there right now that are going to be hating on Lexus because of this move, uh, the yoke steering wheel looks like it's going to be in our society to stay. We're going to see this in more cars, and I think this is going to be an interesting move. I haven't ever driven a yoke steering wheel, so I'd love to hear your, your input on if you have did you like it? Was it something that you could do on a day in, day out basis, commuting, moving through city traffic, those kind of things versus just where you're, you know, left-hand turn on a racetrack? Uh, that would be interesting to see, and we're going to see a lot more of it, I think. The other thing that is going to be coming with this vehicle is AI-powered semi-autonomous driving tech, which is what I kind of feel like uh, Tesla is setting at today is semi-autonomous. You do have to intervene in many off options. 
Uh, even though full self-driving is uh, advancing very quickly and AI is continuously learning, we are seeing pretty significant advances in AI autonomous driving. I think this could be something that comes much faster than what everybody thinks it will. But the fact that they're uh, basically classifying this as semi-autonomous is an interesting choice of words. It'll be interesting to see how uh, Lexus kind of jumps over and what kind of tech they're using around AI and also the autonomy uh, platform that they're going to be using for these vehicles. So I haven't had a chance to see any of this in real life in terms of where Lexus is going with this kind of stuff. Their lane assist is somewhat, um, I won't say it's it's average, but it's not a great lane assist product. I have driven several uh, RXs and NXs that have it. If you qu compare it, if you've ever driven a BMW that has lane assist, it kind of has that hard pushback. Uh, which almost makes you lose control in some cases on lane assist. It's not the um, the type of lane assist that you get with autopilot, which is pure and simple. You are driving, it stays in the lane, and it doesn't move. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how all that kind of comes up. Now, again, AR HUD is a thing now. It's something I think we're going to see more and more in terms of uh, our heads-up display opportunities. This is something I think we've got to get moving in all of our EVs and really all automotive, uh, via all automobiles in general, because I just think the opportunity to be able to display a lot more data, uh, especially if you can get into voice commands, and I've talked a little bit about this in another video, is where is this going? Uh, we're going to try to have someone on from a company called Invisix that is uh, all about AR uh, heads-up displays, really advanced AR too. So we're going to see a lot of input data points. I think there's a lot of opportunity here for these manufacturers to really kind of spice up the cabs and the features of vehicles in the future. So it's going to be interesting. Battery pack, let's talk about that for a second. They are talking about a structural battery pack. This is a huge move by Lexus if this is real. Um, where is Toyota going with this overall approach with Lexus and Toyota? I just don't understand. They've got this, I don't know what they're doing. If they're doing head fakes here, if they're trying to throw the market off, but what's happening, this is the first time I've seen structural battery pack in the use case for a Japanese vehicle coming out uh, of Toyota. So it's gonna be interesting to see how this actually comes to fruit. If this is in fact the case, this is going to reduce uh, a lot of what they're doing in terms of their, their manufacturing. It's going to speed up their manufacturing. We've all heard Elon talk about this, you know, over and over again, is this is a game changer in terms of manufacturing. If you've never seen or heard Sandy Monroe talk about this, you should check out his channel because he really goes into structural engineering and why it's important to use structural battery packs as the potential base for these vehicles. So lots of upside there. There is some other things here from Lexus. The company said Tuesday, it will introduce 20 new vehicles by 2025. To me, this is music to my ears. This is an aggressive ramp up. 20 new vehicles, of course, we'll probably see various versions within a particular model. But the fact that we're seeing this kind of advancement, uh, and that's, of course, going to be interesting. Although, just 10 of those will be all electric, hybrid, or run on hydrogen. Now, I know uh, Toyota and Lexus have been uh, researching hydrogen for some time. I'm kind of curious if they are either putting this out as a way to not necessarily give you an understanding of which direction they're going in terms of the competition, or if maybe they've actually had some hydrogen breakthroughs uh, maybe that have not been revealed. If hydrogen has been a breakthrough, this could be a major in the alternative energy space. So it's gonna be interesting to see what they come out with. Um, the other thing, Toyota chairman, Akio Toyota, said electric vehicles are overhyped. I mean, here you are, you're, you're doing electrified, can mean that you're doing hybrids plug-in, hybrids that combine electrification with internal combustion engines. I don't understand why Toyota is not going all in on this. I mean, sure, they've got legacy manufacturing in place. They've been one of the number one car sales uh, suppliers in the world. But I just feel like this company is, is one of the companies that can compete at the global level with EVs. And I don't understand the resistance to really moving full force. And maybe, just maybe, when we look back on this in about a year, we will say, Toyota was just doing head fakes 
and literally were going all in on EVs, but wanted to keep everybody guessing. Let's assume that might be the case. However, here's the situation. Toyota and, and Lexus, in my case, or in my opinion, they're still very far behind. Um, they are a Toyota company. Uh, Lexus, of course, I just think when you look at, when you put so much into the emphasis of fully electric powertrains, I just don't know if this company is going to be one of the leaders in, in terms of how they can really move into the future. Uh, so that's the question. I think you guys are gonna have to make all those decisions out there as you, whether you're buying a Toyota or a Lexus in the future. Um, if you are looking for an open company that is just saying, hey, I'm just gonna put it out there um, and I wanna go in this direction, I don't know, there's some, there's a lot of things happening here. And of course, we just had some recent news where, uh, Le excuse me, Tesla and Toyota are potentially entering a partnership. That tells me some other things that could be happening with Toyota and with uh, Tesla that could be helping. Because I think Elon, when you look at what his uh, past tweets have been and kind of his whole vision of where EVs should be in the next few years, he's very open to sharing the technology or at least licensing, I should say. Uh, to other car manufacturers. If that were the case, could be a match made in heaven here. But Lexus definitely got uh, the styling cues on point. This is one of the most beautiful uh, vehicle designs I have seen in recent reveals. It definitely starts to move toward that space age look and feel. No knock on what Volkswagen did with the ID4, but it is kind of a design that is a little bit dated in terms of what an SUV might look like, kind of has that older school SUV look. I feel like these crossovers and the future of SUVs not necessarily are the case with like the Tesla Model Y. It does have that sloped kind of X4, um, X6 look from BMW. And even if you go into the Mercedes uh, Coupe, which has that sloped you know, crossover effect. I do feel like there's some design cues that um, Lexus is doing here that is quite different and could create a very unique class of vehicle that is kind of a, almost in between the hybrid and the SUV itself. God knows we don't need another classification, but it could answer the question for those who maybe aren't ready to buy that crossover, but you want that um, almost that wagon feel of a true SUV. Maybe this is the one that sits in the middle uh, in terms of their design and styling cues. I don't know. Tell me what you think. Is this car going to be one that goes head to head with maybe something like the Model S? Or is this is one of the vehicles from Lexus that could be going right up against the Model Y and some of the other players in that fifty dollars to $60,000 range for EVs? We're going to find out very soon as Lexus starts to re release more information and data. Of course, you can always check us here on TechPath. If you are listening to this show on the podcast, in, in this particular episode, I, I ask you to jump over to the YouTube channel because that's where you're going to get all the visual elements of this. Sure, we're talking about it. It's great for the podcast, but really jumping over to YouTube is going to give you the full experience. It's also going to give you the ability to subscribe over on YouTube and give us some great comments. We love to get uh, your comments on where you think the automotive industry is going, especially around alternative energy and EV as an overall space. If you have an idea for either a topic or a person or a company that you would love to see here on TechPath, send us a note to producer at revernetworks.com or you can hit me up on Twitter at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on TechPath.